if you want to be able to throw a ball forever, then practice throwing a ball. If you want to be able to, uh, you know, jump rope or run, you got to practice it uh, frequently or you'll lose the ability. Regardless of what builds the most muscle and, you know, burns the most body fat and makes you look a particular way, don't forget that. that you, you have to practice uh, movement patterns or you lose them eventually. Oh yeah, here we are, Mind Pump, and here's the giveaway. It's the Prime Bundle, Maps Prime, Maps Prime Pro. You can get it for free. You got to do the following though. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode to help us with the YouTube algorithm, just uh, being honest here. Also subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you do all those things and we like your comment, we'll notify you and you'll get free access to the Prime Bundle. Also, we're having a sale this month one of our bundles is 50% off, and one of our popular workout programs is 50% off. Here's what they are. The starter bundle. This is MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Prime, and the Intuitive Nutrition Guide. Normally discounted, but you can take an additional 50% off. Then we also have MAPS Split. This is a bodybuilder, high-volume body part split routine. Great for sculpting the body, building uh, your body, muscles. It's great for fat loss. It's advanced. That program is also 50% off. So if you're interested... Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code MAYSPECIAL for the 50% off discount. All right, here comes the show. Here's an old adage with a lot of truth. If you don't use it, you lose it. Let's talk about what that actually means, though. Man, yeah. Right? I heard that so many times. What, uh, what did that originally refer to? That is I a, know fitness-wise what we're going to get to, but... That is a great question. Yeah. I bet you, I'm going to guess, maybe Doug can look this up, Jack Lane is the first person to say Oh, you think so? You think it was a fitness saying first? Yes. Mm. I think it was Jack Lane that said it first. I'm going to I'm going to guess. This is a total guess, but I I I feel I feel 60% I feel like I'm more Justin's head is at. Justin's thinking it's probably something outside of fitness and then we've used Like a it. jingle? Yeah. Yeah. Like I feel like it's it, it, like a cereal. We've brought it in. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't use it, you I use remember it. being it referred to like things like riding a bike when I was little. Like that's the first time, like I think a I, skill, yeah. Yeah, so I'm well, that's what it yes. means. That's literally what it means. Why? Well, yeah, I know, yeah. but I mean, I don't know if it was it, it originated from a, a God, fitness person. I, I really feel. I like hope Doug can like, find this. Yeah, I'm super curious. But look, now. look up origins of because you don't know how to Google right. Origins <laughs> of if you don't use it, you lose it. There's a skill to using Google, by the way. <laughs> yeah. All right. So what does that mean? Okay. So yeah. uh, the way we use it, and and why there's truth behind the way we're going to explain it is. Whenever you stop practicing a movement, whenever you stop doing a particular exercise, you actually begin to lose the skill yeah. of that particular movement. And for example, if you stopped overhead pressing and you avoided lifting your arms above your head for most of the time, um, eventually you would start to lose that skill. It'd be very difficult for you to do it and you'd, you would start to develop compensations as a result. Same thing with a barbell squat or a deadlift or a row or a press. And this is one of the main reasons why it's so important to use a variety of movements and exercises because you you actually start to lose that skill. And this applies even to the most fundamental of skills. For example, if you stopped walking for a long time, if you let's say you were injured for a year uh, in a in a hospital bed for a year, and you did no walking, when you got up to start walking again, you would quickly find that you kind of relearn the skill of walking to some extent. So. It's a very true statement, and that's one again. This is why when people say things like, "Oh, you could develop your legs without ever having to squat," or "Oh, you never have to do an overhead press; you can still build your shoulders," you know, there may be some truth in some of that, but also we're missing also a, a big, dark side to that. Very dark side. You lose the skill of uh, of doing those things, yeah. and those are fundamental movements. And I mean, the, the body's an efficiency machine. It's um, whatever you're telling it to do and prioritizing is what it's going to focus on making sure like the energy management is, is allocated in that direction. So yep. whatever um, you start to deprioritize is what it's going to inevitably sort of prune off. And, and this is what we see later on where strength, especially around the hips with, with older people, if they're not maintaining squatting, they're not maintaining these type of hip hinging patterns, it really becomes problematic with the way that they're able to function and, and carry on the rest of their days. Dude, it said very, very brilliantly. And it's, it's, it's completely true because you're, you're maintaining skills and, and movement patterns take costs energy and your body's always looking to become as efficient as possible. Just like you said, and, and reduce its energy expenditure and if you, if it has no demands to do a particular movement, your body's like, we don't need this. Let's remove this. Let's prune this off. Yeah, I'm trying to think right now. Uh, 
which did I see more of the the squatting or actually over? I I think I would make the case that uh, overhead stuff goes first for mm, clients. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think I see the. I think you're right. I think I see the overhead thing uh, even more in younger people today than I, I used to. Like advanced age clients, it was almost a given. Like if you had somebody north of sixty years old. Uh, getting them to squat just down to 90 degrees or heaven forbid below that was nearly impossible or very difficult to get them to and or reach their arms above their head. And I guess the, I think it's because our, our daily lifestyle just doesn't require that. So if you do not make an effort to actively train the body in those planes or to go through that range of motion, uh, you absolutely prune it off and lose it. And I think we're seeing this happen earlier and earlier because of technology and stuff. That yes. We, yeah. We're getting to a place now where, I mean, we've talked about this or we've alluded to it a couple of times where Justin has had uh, models, right? Because we've replaced all all of our video demos and stuff in the programs with models instead of any of us. And we would, you know, contract, obviously, people that are in really good shape and fit to be models for Mm -hmm. a fitness program. And many times, Justin would be stressing out because he's like, fuck, they can't do this, like, basic overhead press when that is a a very fundamental movement. And we're we're talking about people in their 20s and 30s. Who are built. Yeah. Yeah. That have muscle because they just stop doing that. So I can't stress the importance of that enough. And I think it's going to get worse uh, right then it is before it gets better because you, I don't think enough people do it. You're right because yep. if you go back 50 years, uh, yeah. your your job and your daily activity included a lot of stuff, and now it's it's just sitting down. You know the attitudes in medicine have even changed around this. So it used to be where if you struggled walking, they would immediately have you use a cane or a walker. Like no no use this real quick. Mm-hmm. Now they actually try to to extend how long they can keep you from using those things because what we find now is that when you start using a walker, you lose the ability to walk without a walker even faster. You actually, your body starts to adapt to using a walker or adapt to using a cane. So if you take somebody who starts to use a walker, you know that them walking without a walker becomes more dangerous faster after they start using that walker. I know this with my grandma. My grandma eventually went to starting using a walker. And I remember I was really trying to figuring out a way to, to kind of prolong that. And I told her, I said, specifically, I said, honey, I, you know, no, no, I said, it, when you use this, you're going to lose your ability to walk without it much faster. So we got to mm-hmm. figure out a way to keep you moving without as long as possible. Now she's, you know, in her late eighties and, you know, inevitably we had to use it, but, um, but yeah, that's the case. And medicine has actually changed around that. Have you seen some of the crazy interventions now that are, they're coming up with in terms of like getting people to uh, go through walking patterns again, that can't walk. So they have like, Zero mm. gravity treadmills. Oh yeah, and they have like these. Um, uh, what do they call like exoskeleton type yeah. of? Uh, uh, you know, uh, they're like suits, right? Little suit that they put on, yeah, for their lower half of their body. But it 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 just starts to to program and take them through those movements, even though they they don't have that connection yet. Eventually, like with some people, I'm sure this isn't the case with everybody, but um, it's able to you know refire those signals again and get the brain to respond and and actually uh, connect with that again yeah. and and help them walk. This is true for all movement patterns. So it's yeah. like uh, if you want to be able to throw a ball forever, then practice throwing a ball. If you want to be able to uh, you know jump rope or run, you got to practice it uh, frequently, or you'll lose the ability. I had personal experiences with when we did uh, windmill. Uh, I remember years ago, uh, we programmed windmills into one of our programs, which now we we really talk highly of a windmill. And I went to try doing it and I couldn't. It was like my body just didn't want to move in that way. And I remember it was like, oh crap, this is not good. So I practiced it and then I was able to do it. Uh, but it was because I never did windmill. I never did that movement pattern. So I just didn't have it. Even though I was fit, I wasn't old. So... Um, regardless of what builds the most muscle and you know burns the most body fat and makes you look a particular way, don't forget that. that you, you have to practice uh, movement patterns or you lose them eventually. Well, the the windmill, I think, addresses what I think is the, the third most common, right? So I think the third most, the, the three most common are the ability to squat deep, the ability to, to uh, lift your arms above your head, and then rotational strength. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Those three are the most common that I think I would see in clients that you would, and, and those are the, if, that's, the, that's the compass test that maps prime, by the way. It is. Yeah. Those are the three yeah, things we that we that put in there. For, yeah, intentionally. Well, and, and I think if you, 
I think if you do a really good job of dressing uh, addressing those three, you 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 cover some pretty good basis of like as far as protection for yourself and then keeping the basic fundamental skills of everyday life. Whereas if you lack in one of those, that's where you see injury and overcompensation. Totally, hundred yep. percent. I gotta tell you guys about this. Uh, this I don't know if it's you can call it a prank, but I was joking around with uh, with Jessica and the kids the other day, and. Uh, <laughs> it was, it was hilarious. So I go to change the baby's diaper, right? Now, earlier, we have really dark, bittersweet uh, chocolate that we give to Aurelius every once in a while because it's a bitter flavor. And we've read that if you introduce, it's important to introduce different flavors to a baby to get them to develop a palate. And one thing that they recommend is really dark, bittersweet chocolate because it's not sweet, it's bitter. And, you know, that's a flavor that kids kind of need to develop. And we give them things like olives and stuff like that, do the same thing. So anyway, he had a little bit of bittersweet, uh, this like, like, like I said, dark chocolate. And, and I go to change his diaper and he had some of it on the side of his face. And I finished changing his diaper and everything, right? So I took a wipe and I wiped off the chocolate. So now it's on the way. Oh, God. So <laughs> Jessica walks over. You licked it or something? So she, oh, she walks over and I hold the gross, wipe like this. Dude. And I, and I go like this and I go to like touch her with it. She's like, don't, don't do that. And then I like touch my face with it. And she looks at me bewildered. Yeah. She goes, do you know what's on that wipe? And I'm like, yeah, I know what's on that wipe. And I'm like touching my face with she's like, oh my God, you have no idea what's on that wipe. And my kids are like, ah, don't do that. And I'm like doing this. So I think she thought that I didn't know that there was something on the wipe, but I knew it was chocolate. Yeah. yeah. Finally, then I, then I, threw it at her and she screamed and she got so mad at me. I'm like, that's chocolate. I put chocolate on it. <laughs> but the look on Forever her face. the junior higher, dude. But the look on her face was like, she thought that I didn't know. So yeah. she was looking at me like, confused. Like, are you, what are you You know doing? what I didn't know? I didn't know that they made uh, baby toddler wife beaters. I oh, you like those? <laughs> I didn't even know that. Where'd was, you find that? I don't yeah, even know that like was. I didn't even know that was a special thing, bro. Uh, uh, yeah, Guido shop that yeah. you found, or no? Yeah, Jessica found Italy, them. The but she, a, she hates it that when I. So that's what I. That's what they. I mean, since we were kids, that's what you call them. So it's not politically correct. Whatever. We, it's a. It's an what, undershirt. Well, yeah, what would it be called? A rib tank or something? I don't know, yeah, dude. It's just. A, it's an undershirt. It's a wife beater. Dude. It's an under whatever. Yeah, yeah get over but, it. Now that I refer to Do people get mad when you say that, is that no, thing? no, no, I've never heard it. Everybody gets mad you for could, everything. It's like you I could get do. mad, yeah, right? yeah. because Listen, anything you can I, get it, mad at. It's so funny. It's 2022. To be clear, yeah. we do not advocate for beating <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. your wife. I stand. And to be clear, you know, I don't think really is wife beating. I don't no. agree with <laughs> wife beating. He's way too young to get married. That's number one. No, yeah. so uh, so, but when I call it that, when he wears it, she doesn't like it. So like, I'm like, honey, go get go get the baby's uh, you know, wife beater. She's like, don't call it that. I'm like why? Because he's wearing it. Well, <laughs> we can't call it that anymore. But yeah, so he he puts it on and then he walks around the house. And I just, oh my god! I the picture, up. the picture of him in the wife beater eating, or the video you had of him eating sardines and just and act, pretending to be like he's on the phone. I thought, oh my oh god. yeah, he's the <laughs> one where he's on the phone. It looks yeah, like yeah. he's picking making, up all these traits from dad yeah, right, looks, right away. Looks like sure. he's making making deals. And then he was eating strawberries, and the strawberry had like a little red stain on it, so it looked like a little pasta stain. Now he's <laughs> he's, he's definitely uh, he's progressing really fast. I mean, he's already starting to to talk and stuff yeah. like that. So he's he's moving. He pretty to say anything we tell him, but he can't. Obviously, he can't say any, everything. We yeah, tell no, him. he's he's definitely moving. Like I tried to get him to say fire alarm, and he goes blah blah blah. blah. I don't know what he does. Like, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Do it yeah, again. but the <laughs> fact that he's already trying to do that already yeah. is. I yeah. mean, he's progressing really quick now. So I wouldn't have asked you this until probably because I don't really think I started to see traits come out until probably two or so for Max. Are you already starting to see? traits and behaviors that emulate mom or dad? Like, yeah. Are, are you seeing some Yeah, things? like he's, Jessica and I are both um, really touchy-feely, like love, like we're love bugs. And he is huge. She went to go visit my cousin. Uh, my cousin has a little uh, a little baby girl who's, I think she's like, I want to say she's maybe almost six months now. So she's just, you know, she was just born six months ago. And you know how it is. You take a year and a half year old to see a six month old. You don't always know how they're going to react because they don't know necessarily to be gentle or whatever. So you're always kind of like, all right, let's see how they, and he just, he's so gentle with her and then he kisses her and then he hugs her and then he's very protective. He did this with my, with my nephew too. My nephew came over and we sat my nephew on one of those push cars, but he was just a bit too short. So his feet were kind of barely touching and Aurelius was standing next to him, holding him steady while he's playing with it. So he's like this super, and then he's played with other kids who are like rough or whatever. Like mm -hmm. we have friends that bring their kids over and one of them has a, a little boy that's 
like like maybe eight months older than Aurelius. So there's an age gap there. But he also has an older brother. So if, you, if you've ever seen little boys who have older brothers are 10 times more rough. Oh, yeah. Because they got to deal with the older brother. Yep. So he comes over and plays, plays with Aurelius. But he takes Aurelius' toys. He pushes them. And Aurelius is like, he doesn't know what to do. He like goes to hug him and the <laughs> kid pushes happening? him. Yeah. <laughs> and Jessica's like, oh, no. And I'm like, I'm, in my head, I'm thinking like, oh, no, let him, let's see if he. Let him figure it yeah, out. Yeah, let's see if he toughens yeah. up a little. No, but he, he's just a sweet, he's just a sweet little lover uh, of a kid. Um, so that, that trait really comes out. Um, he likes to, he likes to hug people. He likes to kiss people. If somebody's not feeling good, he'll walk up to them and he'll like yeah. rub their arm or whatever. So just, well, just really sweet. Yeah. It's kind of, talking about our kids. Like it, it's just kind of funny because some of the traits, like I don't ever know when I'm going to see them kind of pop up, but every now and then like ever just cracks me up and I, I always forget to like write it down what, what actually happened. But I do remember two specific ones that just, I was dying uh, one of them was, um, so, <laughs> so Ethan uh, ripped one, like just a loud fart, right? And he <laughs> just walks by and he goes, God bless you. And they just <laughs> keep walking. I'm like, that's not what you say. <laughs> but I'm going to use that that's, forever now. That's funny. God bless you. Max's like a, thing right now. If he uh, hears you like cough, sneeze, clear your throat, anything, he says, bless you to it now. That's, that's like, so Yeah. Awesome. He connects that as like, bless you always. So it's hella funny. I'll like just be <laughs> Cough like that, but like, bless you. <laughs> oh, that's cute, yeah, dude. Yeah, that's yeah. So yeah cute. and, and uh, uh, we were talking about something else where it was like, um, uh, I think like Ethan was afraid to do something or whatever, and he's like, You don't need to be so paranoid about it. And I was like, Caranoid? Caranoid, because you know, these kids are like picking up on all the lingo of like <laughs> being a Karen and you know, all this kind of stuff. <laughs> oh, in the pandemic. That's great. And so he's like, You're Caranoid. And I'm like, I'm using that. Oh, <laughs> that's know, so for great. everything. I was like, Brilliant, dude. You're coming up with stuff. Yeah. I love it. Keep as, going. As they get older, you start to see more of your traits, you know, start to come out. Yeah. Like my dark sense of humor, both my older kids definitely have it. My daughter's got it more than my son, though. Oh my God. Well, you know, so, okay. So you have old enough now cause you have the oldest, uh, have you seen, um, like when maybe your son was younger, he was more like his mom. And then all of a sudden he became more like you have, has it flipped or has it been pretty consistent, you know, watching the, the older ones grow up and uh, they, that's cons a, that's and they can consistently stayed the traits similar. Does that, you know, I mean, I hear you know what you're asking? saying. Um, that's a good question. Cause I've heard people say that before where like, I mean, it's actually been said to me about me. Like I, as younger, a lot of people said I was just like my mom. As I've gotten older, people have been like, Oh, you're just like your dad now. You know, that makes sense with, yeah. uh, that would make sense because obviously when boys are little, they don't have the testosterone, but then it kicks in and that might bring out more of those, those traits I would imagine. Mm. So that's interesting. I know my daughter, right? My daughter right now, she's in sixth grade. She's running for student council. So she's like going to go give a speech and do the whole thing. She's running against seventh graders. Like that's some guts, man. I wouldn't have done that in, at that age. So that, you know, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. It is interesting. They're definitely different than me in other ways as well. Like, like they're not, uh, they're more quiet than I would say that, that I would. I definitely, more. most people are more quiet. <laughs> the <laughs> odds man. of getting Everybody a louder else. kid. Jesus yeah. Christ. I know, dude. It might be the youngest though. That kid sometimes is loud as shit. Oh, so wow, I, my, really? my poor Jessica, who she's sensitive to loud sounds. I'm like, <laughs> we're having another one too. The third one, but this, this next one might be the, the, the loudest one of all. Uh, you might be totally screwed. So Now, Justin, with yours, uh, Ethan has consistently been your wife and Everett's been consistently you, yeah? Or did so, that far, yeah. so far. So far. So far, like in terms of personality traits and whatnot, it's been very, very much like that split division. I mean, there's some things I definitely see myself in with, with Ethan as well. Um, but it, it has sort of started that way. I'm wondering if it's going to shift, you know, yeah. like, you know, down, down the road, but, uh, uh, it's just, it's, it's too, too clearly obvious, especially when he just like bruises his way through everything and, and breaks things and, oh, you dude. know, it's like, I'm like, Oh, yeah. I'm trying to, I'm like, what? dude, calm down. Stop being so rough with like, he, That's he, like a mirror, dude. Courtney all the time. Like, dude, calm down. Like you gotta be gentle, you know? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm talking to myself. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> watching Justin do anything that requires uh, like a level of gentleness, bro. We were, we were, okay. I it's, to tell it's the like, audience it's right the now. I have to tell thing. the audience, right? Okay. So, yes, yesterday, yesterday, the day before yesterday, we're signing docs on a place. Oh, yeah. We're, we're yeah. closing, oh, man. We're closing in Oklahoma. <laughs> signing right now. a piece of paper. Yeah, we're signing docs, right? And it's kind of a fast thing, right? You know, all four of us have to sign. And so we just kind of, and we've done this quite a few times now. 
and, and Justin's to my right, and I sign. I pass Justin. Justin, <laughs> yeah, he takes the fucking pen in, <laughs> through the paper. It was it's, a sharp pen, I'm like, guys. I've never seen that happen yeah. before. No, it wasn't, bro. <laughs> we all use it. It was the same pen. We're all using the same exact. <laughs> no, I did that with like, like only my car only Justin oh, would would wow. sign a dig a hole through the papers dude. when we're signing. You dogs. think you'd learn, right? No, it's still gonna be there. No, dude. when you picked up your car, your new car, we yeah. get in there and he's trying to figure out oh, like, yeah. <laughs> how the shifter puts it in reverse and forward because it's a little different, right? I'm like, bro, bro. You, it's like a gentle tap. That's all it is. And he was shifting it like it was a like it was a stick shift from the 80s where you got to like, caca, caca. Yeah, I think I need to go back to that, dude. By that, the like, way, fits me better. I'm so glad. Okay, so I was telling Katrina that and sharing that because you drive have the same cars, right? So, uh I was like, oh, you know what? I bet he hasn't had to put it in neutral yet. So remind me today while I'm here and we're here together and I see you drove it to show you. And I don't know if you have yet or not, but neutral is very tricky on that car. It's a, because mm. it's, okay, drive and reverse. Yeah. It's, you just got to tap. It's in, in the middle of those. Yeah. So, and I remember the first time I took it through like a car wash, like even I like struggled with that. I was like, oh, really? Yeah. It, it's really actually hard to find neutral. You have to have such a very gentle. Oh, I'm learning, dude. So I thought about a car right gentle, away. dude. I'm like dying, dude. Cause like I, I try and press the button, it's not working. I'm like, <laughs> it's a touch screen. I thought about that and I thought about how frustrated I got the first time that it happened to me because I had to throw it in neutral to put it on one of those car wash and I hadn't actually practiced. I, other than before that, I hadn't put it in neutral. I had the car for I don't know how long. And I'm like freaking out trying to get it in there. It took yeah. me forever to actually figure out that, oh my God, I got to tell Justin because <laughs> he is worse than I am for sure. <laughs> I can just see you losing your shit and getting ready to get You ever hear him uh, totally. text on his phone? Yeah. He's like, car, 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 car. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a typewriter, dude. It's, a, it's electronic touchscreen, bro. Oh, I do God. everything full throttle, oh, you guys. I know. Oh, you have two speeds. That's why. That's one thing I, I love do. about it. Or when, oh, or when yeah. he eats, you know, he's like, he's not like a bite. You know, it's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a space. Don't worry about the rest of <laughs> It's a good time, bro. It's all, it's all, these are all character traits that make us all, uh, you know, all different. Yeah, so it's, it's better than being stuff. moody. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how I got oh that. Oh, my God, <laughs> dude. Hey, a bit extra this, this morning. Uh, oh, we, got, hey, cloud, we got, uh, dude, can I just say right now? We uh, literally had, what was it, like four days of break? Did we get like four days of Adam in a good mood? I think it was four days. Whatever, right? We had dude. a break. We should have celebrated. True. You were like moody for a while. And then we had four days of like, oh, he's in a good mood. And yeah. then boom, today. It's bad. Whatever. Mood. What happened today? What got you mad Oh, no, I just got a whole slew of stuff. I mean, my poor son again, like. Yeah, that's another ear, yeah, yeah, another ear infection. That'll make anybody in a bad mood, I guess. Right. So I mean, I mean, I literally it has not been an exaggeration. We have not been able to string two weeks together since October of last God, year. So man. that's always frustrating. And I feel bad, right? I'm flying out, I'm leaving today, and you know, poor Katrina, like <sighs> You know, there's been already a handful of times when I'm I'm flying out and she's home by herself with him, and like she's already got a crazy schedule with work and then taking care of him and then not having me help. So I, I feel bad about that. Poor kid. Then man. hella late last night, I was like half asleep and I had pulled up uh, Instagram, <clears throat> and I have a private account for Maximus for my family and close friends so they can see him. And it's literally just him. It's just yeah. all photos of him. And I've, I smart. I thought it was very smart. I started when it when he was first born. Great way so for people to see pictures. Oh, and it's stuff. so cool. I love it. I already go back and, and go through it. And so, you know, I've had that account now for two and a half, almost, or almost three years now. And it popped up. Uh, what, it, what is Maximus's age or whatever? So just not thinking about it, I just, I, I plugged it in. I put, you know, July, his birth date in there and then yeah, he's two years old. Save. Right? Yeah. And then, boom, this thing popped up on Instagram that it's uh, you cannot have an account if you're under the age of 13. And so it like, like a two year old going to type in there. So it it logged me out now and it gave me like it said I had like 13 days to dispute this situation or whatever, which Instagram is such a pain in the ass on how to dispute anything. Try to or, get a hold of someone on Instagram. Oh my God, no dude. One. So now I'm like, I'm so I'm that as aside from the other things that's going on, too. That has me the most pissed off because that is the 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 one of the only ways that uh, some of my family that live in other states and don't get to see him they see him and get to. Do you have those pictures saved anywhere else? I mean, luckily, I the uh, I I do have most of those I believe in my iPhone right now. Okay, good. So that like, but God, it's gonna be a headache to. I mean, they I, they were all in chronological order. Like, I even was like systematic on like how many posts I would do. So it would be like a really nice, consistent, like mm -hmm. timeline of him. So I've put a little thought into how I post post on that. So it'd be a really cool thing for me to look at. That's so annoying. So <clears throat> and, and the problem is you can't get like, like when I got booted, how do you get a hold of somebody? 
from Instagram. It's stupid because no you you they, they have like this uh, it's all automated, right? They yeah, don't have you, any real people? And then they, I, I've already had things before where I've sent in like uh, you know complaint or trying to get something done. And they have an automatic response that even comes back. Like I had one in there from, I think, like last year. And it says like, oh, due to our overwhelming and blah, 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 we have not been able to get. So it's like, okay, you give me 13 days to resolve this, you, but then you don't uh, respond, <clears throat> respond to me. So yeah, I'm super irritated about that. And then the, the icing on the cake, because I'm in Instagram, I happen and I'm like, I'm, I'm like this close to being like so done you know, with getting into DMs. Like I've tried for a very long time to get as many of them. Obviously we all know that we can't reach everybody anymore. Um, but what really annoys me is when I'm in there and I want to help, help people. That's what the real purpose of our Instagrams are. Uh, and I'm dealing with people that are, you know, firing at me because of memes or whatever. And they just get so triggered over, so shit and get it's yeah. everything has to turn into this big political fucking debate and argument it's like and i don't even think i post really political stuff like i'll post a meme and it to me and to me memes are like <clears throat> i don't know a, a way to have levity around a time today like when sure. it's so yeah. fucking it's satire yeah it's it, it's it's not meant for me like this meme is not who I represent? It's, it's not a representation. I don't identify. Of, yeah, I don't. With this, yeah, yeah, I don't. It's it's not a representation of my political, economic views, Bro, or spiritual, is- or religious views. It's like something came across in, on my social platform, or someone shared with me, and I chuckle and I laugh. I think it's funny, so I share it with my community. Right, as simple as that. But there's always a handful of people that, oh my god, I'm gonna unfollow you now. It's yeah. like fucking. They, you they don't need to, to tell, tell me. Go. You know what I'm saying? Go. I don't it's, want you following hey, me anyways. Life is too easy, bro. Life is too easy now for people. They don't have anything really like to, to uh, really challenges them, and so they have to find. Is that things. what it is? Like yeah. I, I can't put my. Yeah. I mean, I saw. I saw. Believe me, Max if there was real shit going down. Sure. Our, our friend Max Lugavir post uh, yesterday. This annoys the shit out of me. What you're about to talk he, about? He posts. Well, it's all the same thing to me, and I, I don't know if it's that people don't have enough to worry about or what causes people to be like this, but. He just got on the uh, Tucker Carlson show, which for Max... Now, Tucker Carlson has a segment. Not, it's not his news show. It's a segment where he talks to people about other topics, health, wellness. Nonetheless, kind of he's one of the most famous people on TV right now. Right. Yes. Huge That's audience. Yeah, huge. Right. And huge for Max, who has an incredible message around health. He's a good friend of ours. And so what a very cool thing to and celebrate. And he literally went on there and talked 100% about his books, yeah. about nutrition, <clears throat> brain health, Alzheimer, nothing else. And he gets a bunch of heat and people, oh, you, you know, I hope Tucker Carlson's yeah. fans like die of poison. And I hope you, yeah. you know, I can't believe you even talked to him or you shouldn't even be in his, it's like the <sighs> irony of people who preach tolerance all the time are the most intolerant. So, First of all, health, <clears throat> health is applies to everybody. I don't care what's, what your political beliefs are or whatever. Like everybody wants to improve their health. Max in the business of helping people become healthier and, what, and, and sell his book. Hey, and when and when did when did we become all of a sudden this country who don't who doesn't believe in talking to people you disagree with or you don't yeah. like? Oh, like man. exactly. It's, it's like the, like it, it, these comments of ooh and oh you shouldn't have gone on there and oh I hope his audience takes arson. It's like Jesus Christ. Like first of all, I know your point. He's not even talking politics on there. Secondly, even if he was, why not? Why not? Yeah. I mean, and, and if there, it was a reverse, if you went on something on a, yeah. a super left-leaning channel, like who Unless cares? You have a weak argument you can't defend, <sighs> and that's you know where I see it. It's like it, it, everything needs discussion you, to to get to truth. Yeah, no, everything. It's, it's become the the game has become to uh, demonize the person and not the message. And so, in other words, if 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 Hitler were alive today. Uh, obviously, trying to discuss ideas with Hitler would be like, why would you discuss this guy? He already killed all these people. He's a terrible person. So what they've done is they've labeled everybody they disagree with like that. So just sitting down to talk about ideas now is is poison because how dare you talk to Satan, right? Yeah. And it's like, look, debate the ideas, not the person themselves, unless it's an actual... Like, I, I thought what the comedian... We, remember we just watched, all of us watched, uh, what's his name, Chris Stefano. Yeah, I love him. such yeah, yeah. a good stand. No relation, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. such such a good it's stand. It was uh, him, wasn't it him who made who made the joke about or made the joke about? I don't know when this happened. AOC. But no, 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 no. He oh. made the joke about where you know we've now moved into this time. I think it was him. We've moved into this time where words speak louder than actions. Yep. 
Like it used to be said that like it's actions true. speak louder than words, and that's what we've always believed. Like, hey, yeah. forget what they say or whatever. That pay attention to what they do and how they act, and it's like people right away now write that yeah. off. It's like what you say means the most. And it's like they right away attack somebody for saying something. It's like, dude, you don't know what that person is doing. What, what if they, what if they've done more good for humanity and people right. than you will ever do in your lifetime. And because they say something you disagree Words with, you want them canceled. What? Super manipulative. Did you see the, the, the undercover video of the Twitter employee talking <laughs> crap about Elon Musk? Mm -mm. Oh my God. He's like, yeah, he's got Asperger's, you know, so he's special needs. So, you know, that's all I need to say. I'm not going to listen to him because I'm like, bro, wow. you're how, talking about how are they not getting canceled? the most successful entrepreneur of all time who's created m multiple billion dollar businesses. And then you say that, like, do you think the deal is going to go through? I think it's going to fall through. I think Twitter's getting revealed. I think a lot of I think, what's under I think the covers so is getting bullshit. revealed. I don't think they're going to let it get doors. revealed. I think that the deal will fall through. Oh, I th and it's going to crash the stock. Twitter's going to crash. That, I mean, I, I, I agree with that. I think that's because it, it, when everyone found out Elon was buying it, it went through the roof. Yeah. And then now that this whole like trying to figure out the bots where they're claiming it's 5% or less, he's like, he's like minimum no, it's, it's 20. Yep. He's worried it's 40 to 50. Yeah. I mean, I think that's going to kill the deal yep. because yeah. I think if it is. Well, yeah, because he yeah, paid a price. valuable that way. That's <laughs> right. He paid a price based off of their public filing. By the way, if it's discovered and they prove that it's, not 5%, but 30%, 40%, they're in big trouble with the SEC because mm -hmm. their, their public filing says something completely different. Yeah. They will get crushed legally and on the market. They would get crushed. So he mentioned, I don't know, did you, have you guys watched the All In uh, interview they did? I watched most not of yet. it. Oh, so good. I do want to check that out. So yeah. good, dude. So he, he talked about, so I'm not familiar. I guess there's an app, I think it's in China called WeChat. Mm. Are you familiar with that? No. So it's kind of like Twitter meets uh, PayPal or Venmo or whatever. Oh, okay. So it has the, it's like a social network, but you can also, it has the, the this ability to pay and stuff like that. And he says that it's, it's one of the most popular apps in China as far as like usage and stuff. And he says, it's something that we don't have that we absolutely need. And they were bringing up, like, was that part of the strategy of Twitter is to potentially convert it could, to look kind of like a WeChat and I think that was part of his strategy, but he's, I think now what he's contemplating, which is going to be really interesting is if this Twitter deal falls through is if he doesn't build one himself mm. and he's, I think he's leaning that way. Oh I, dude. I think if they can't, if they can't resolve this, they don't come forth on the bots thing and it kills the deal. Twitter thing ends up crashing. What a perfect opportunity for him to launch a, a competitive I platform. Would, do not yeah. sleep on that guy. Obviously he, <clears throat> he, he went through some hard times with PayPal, Tesla, SpaceX to the point where he almost went, he was like a week away from bankruptcy yeah. with Tesla. He literally sold everything, including his house and put all his he money finds in. finds a way, man. That's and he, the thing and, about And him. it turned into, remember he, he, Tesla, he was trying to get funding for Tesla to, in 2008 when GM was almost going bankrupt and people were, he said in the interview that people actually got mad at him for asking them for money. <laughs> they hung up the phone and stuff. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. And now look, you know, so the guy's, uh, he's done some pretty, he said something pretty else stuff. that I wasn't aware of either that I, you know, cause obviously he is, he's being attacked, uh, by the left, like crazy, right. For the last, you know, couple of years. And the irony of that is like, he's like, I've never even, re uh, I've voted Republican before. Yeah. yeah. He's like, I'm, con I've consistently voted Democrat. Well, I've heard this from and so he's all, I consider, he's all, I don't really consider myself a Democrat or Republican. I consider myself as a moderate. That's yeah. where I, where I stand. But he goes, to be honest, I've always I've always voted a, a Democrat. It's, it's because he's painted. He's been <laughs> yeah. painted as the evil billionaire that doesn't pay taxes, which is not true <clears throat> at all. And because he's a troll and he speaks his mind online. And so that's, uh, that's poison yeah. for certain political ideologies. And so, and they have to have a boogeyman, right? If you're, you're Elizabeth Warren, mm -hmm. you need to have a boogeyman who's and in, and let's pick on Elon Musk, even though every time she tries to, he literally shits on her. He like, he, he crushes her and says, actually, I paid more taxes than anybody in history. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I did this. Actually, I did that. Um, what about you? You know, but, uh, it's, I think it's pretty funny. Speaking of all this stuff, you guys watching crypto just <laughs> yeah. tank. <laughs> They're under 30,000 uh, Bitcoin. It's been a while since wow. it's been under That's now, super low. Now to be fair, I brought this up because a lot of people are like, I'm going to look this up right now. A lot of people are talking shit about crypto, but we need to also have a little context, okay? So right now, as of the recording of the show, it's it's under 30,000, which it hasn't been in a long time. Now, and that's a huge plummet from, you know, where it was. 60 was its peak, right? Yeah. At one point, it was at 69,000. Oh, However, 69 even. Wow. if you look at the historic, like, context of Bitcoin, 
it's still, look, it's at, if it's under 30 now, I mean, remember when it first started, it was in the hundreds and historically 29 or 30 is still very high. Now, not as high as it was, you know, a year ago or whatever, but if you invested in, 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 in Bitcoin is, is, you know, early as like the beginning of 2020, you're still crushing. So it does this a lot, but the, you know, painting the, the context, it's still for a lot of people is a good buy. The people who got screwed were the people who bought it. I mean, we're, okay. I think we are in the, uh, I mean, there's still people that are debating whether we're in a recession or not, like, because we haven't, Weird that you would, we, it's obvious. well, we, we, we officially haven't had two quarters of the negative GDP, right? So once we have a second quarter officially out of negative, which I think we're on pace uh, to happen, yeah. then people will, were admitting we're in a recession. Then at that point, we've got what, maybe 12, 18 months of a hard time. So what's your prediction on, on like Bitcoin? Do you think like, how far down does this sucker go? Because it, it it's just now, I mean, the stock market led, right, is, is crashing first. Now here you see, Bitcoin. which in the past, by the way, right, in, it, it is so historically with Bitcoin, it's actually normally worked in, in inverse. With That's what they sold it as, as a hedge. The problem with selling it as a hedge is you still can't use Bitcoin everywhere. Yeah. Um, so well, yeah, it, it's being sold like gold as, is, is the classic head, yeah, right? It's value is, yeah, it's, it, that's like hard for me to, to conceptualize. It's right super now. speculative. Yeah. So my, my prediction is as it's going to continue to suffer as the market suffers. I don't see it as being, yeah, it's a, just going to go with the market. Yeah. Because it's a very speculative investment. Um, so how bad, what do you think? What do you think we're, what, depends how bad you I think know, the man. market's going to go. Yeah. I don't know if we've hit the bottom yet. No, I, we have, I don't think so at all. Yeah. I think that, I mean, I mean, the winter will be the darkest time. I mean, yeah. that's, I mean, we're still. What's that mean? Winter is coming. Or yeah. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. That wasn't the intent of that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I think we might, I, I think we might see lower than 10,000. Yeah. I, I would, I would say that's, that sounds very reasonable considering yeah. where it's, you know, in the past where it's been, I would say that's very, very reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. I don't know, man. I mean, I don't think it's going away. So I think, you know, waiting for that bottom would be great to, to then look at maybe, you know, swooping some up at that point. But I, just because it's sort of the standard in terms of like being the first and being like one of those that everybody knows uh, in terms of cryptocurrency, because there are going to be competing crypto. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to be enough, though, because yeah. I think at the end of the day, I think utility is going to be the most important thing of course, with, with, sure. the, with the coins. And that's why, like, I'm not really bullish on Bitcoin. Blockchain, I am. Like, blockchain is here to stay. Like, I don't yeah. disagree. But with of that. all I the think, cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin's the, it's the it's yeah. The but best imagine, one, right? okay, imagine this right now. And I think I think we talked about this off. Yeah, air. we did. We talked about this off air. Imagine. Um, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Google, or Facebook yeah, creates their own, creates their own. And three of the places, okay, Amazon, Google, and Facebook are probably where 90% of the population is either spending their time or shopping. Mm -hmm. So if those three create some sort of a, of a, a cryptocurrency, so, and, and it has some sort of a reward system on there and it goes up in value and there's only so much of it. And so like, it's, it's yeah. Why would you use Bitcoin? Well, yeah. Why would you use Bitcoin? Even if it's transferable, even that if that makes sense. Now, the only problem is, of course, you have to trade dollars for their cryptos. But if they give you crypto for like, if you use Google services this many times, we give you an extra. Google That's how they'll coin. do it. That's yeah. how they win. They, all they have yeah. to do is incentivize you to move over to their cryptocurrency yeah. to make it worth you trading your dollars in for the crypto. I could see that. And all it, it would take is the average person to do some simple math and go, OK, I spend every hmm. year. Nine thousand dollars a year on Amazon shopping. Therefore, if I can trade, if I can trade my Bitcoin or my cash, my nine thousand dollars cash, and I get ten to twelve thousand dollars worth of buying power yeah. in Amazon, kind of a no brainer. It is. So I do it. Now here's the alternate. So you think like basically it could be the MySpace of the social media. So it, in terms of it being first to market, but then getting obliterated. Potentially, right? But here's the alternative. The al the alternate would be if one of these services goes with a third party coin because of uh, trust and safety. So in other words, if Facebook owns the coin and you're on Facebook, uh, they may be less trustworthy than if Facebook uses a third party coin like Bitcoin. They don't control it. So like, hey, we don't control the coin. It's actually got right. its own whatever. So that would be the Do way you that see I that would though? No, these, I think these, I don't think Facebook mega tech would, companies that ha are all powerful and wanting control. Like, I think well, they're going to need crypto for this metaverse stuff that they're not going to yes, stop. Building. I think the only way that that would happen would be if consumers demand it. If consumers demanded a third party coin, 
then then maybe. But I can, I see exactly what you're saying. I think I think you're right. Yeah, so. I don't think they, as so long as it's safe and, and they and it's that, I think that's what everybody right. would care about. Right. So long as it's safe, so it's not manipulated. And, it, and if if I can trade my dollars or other crypto into their coin and it and I already know what my buying habits are in this you know yeah. this this platform or whatever, it's kind of no brainer if they incentivize. Now you the other that. thing would be if these things get so big, these metaverses get so big that mm. you. They they become they all start working together. Mm -hmm. You would want a coin that works across. Well, and I like think a universal coin. And yeah. I think that's the hope from the, the the people that are bullish on Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah. is that because it's third party? So that it crosses. It, it, it'll be like this. Facebook will have their coin, but they also accept Bitcoin. Correct. Yes. You know, Amazon will have their coin, but they also accept correct, Bitcoin. Correct. So I I think that is the if you're bullish, that's the optimistic. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I'm I'm skeptical. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, love the memes around the crypto bros right now. It's cracking me up. It's <laughs> well, like, crypto's bros before, crypto bros, you know, now. And like one of them's like, they're in a private jet. And then the next one is like, yeah. they're in their basement in a, you know, in a chair. <laughs> Secretly, or yeah. Yeah. It does crack me up. Cracks me up. Yeah. I mean, that's everybody was so like, that's all I would hear from anybody who had no idea about investing. They're just, oh, dude, I'm no. in crypto. No. Hey, so look, cool. I'm going to take, I'm gonna take a, a turn here. Uh, I just read some studies on cannabinoids and uh, acne. What? CBD in particular. You forget weed wins again. Bro. It's good so for everything. It, I mean, it seems that <laughs> way, right? No, CBD and CBC. So cannabichromine, cannabidiol, but CBD, the main one, it reduces the inflammatory uh, markers that contribute to acne, oh, and okay. it reduces the, the, the sebum that is produced by the skin. And so they've done studies hmm. where they've used topical CBD, topical hemp oil, and also ingesting it, and they see a reduction in uh, in acne. And this is awesome because this could potentially be a uh, a way to like. There's current acne treatment treatments are very powerful antibiotics with their own nasty long term side effects, right? right. Um, so this could be an alternative to something like that. Is what they're talking about in this article that I read. Now, can't you technically connect almost anything that has anti inflammatory properties to? benefiting or helping acne then in that case? Not necessarily. Uh, oh, okay. There's specific sp specific markers that would be more for acne. Like ibuprofen wouldn't reduce acne, for example, or hasn't been shown to reduce acne. Then it's an but it also reduces the, the the sebum production, the oil that can con that contributes, and the bacteria. It's also got natural antibacterial properties hmm. to prevent the bacteria that promotes uh, you know acne. Unlike an antibiotic, though, it doesn't just destroy everything <clears throat> and cause a barren you know landscape or whatever. So interesting, yeah, very very interesting. I, I, I gotta, I, you know, I would love if anybody uses Ned. So we work with Ned, right? That's uh, full spectrum hemp oil, and it's the best one that we've encountered. I'd love to get some messages from people if they've noticed any reductions in acne. From using uh, that, yeah, I don't cool have you know I use it all the time, but I don't have acne to even notice. I really don't break out, but I'd be interested to see what, if people have noticed any any differences in their skin uh, since using you know since using Ned. Yeah, yeah, really, really interesting. Yeah, stuff. speaking of our partners, I've been enjoying watching Justin do the Zbiotic commercials oh, yeah. on, <laughs> on that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's been fun. Yeah. Who's okay? Who's shooting that? Is that uh, Courtney who's shooting it, or you have your yeah. boys? Who's so it started out Courtney, but um, honestly, we just don't really mesh when it comes to creative things <laughs> like, is she like, telling you what to do is that a nice no. nice way to say that like, what that we try and do is it causes i'm fights. like i'm like dancing a little tightrope here uh no because she's very um left brain like very analytical very like yeah. okay so what and she just like can't get in that headspace in terms of like how to 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 frame it and like and i'm like sitting there trying to like describe all these stupid nuanced details of like how I want it to go. And it just starts frustrating me more than anybody. And she's just like, what? I did it. And like, I'm like, no, not do it again. You yeah. know, and I'm getting all pissed anyway. So I've, I've uh, outsourced it now to Ethan, and he's like my, my go-to guy. Oh yeah. Yeah. And he's, oh, that's he's, fun, he's doing a great job. Yeah. So I'm like, let's see if we can keep this going. And, and so he actually gets it. Cause he's, He's starting. He's starting to kind of get creative himself and and do videos with his friends and all that. And so he kind of gets it. Get him ready to work here, dude. When he gets old enough. I mean, he he would love that. Like I, I think he'd love that. But uh, it, it's been fun. We just 
So we have like a lot of these crazy ideas and we just, we shoot a lot and then, <laughs> and then decide what sucks and what's, you know, maybe this one will work. And so we're, we're trying to kind of like go through that and just have fun with it. Dude, my cousin, uh, speaking of Zbotics, so my cousin's in uh, Nashville right now. So he's never been there before. I've never been. Have you guys ever been to Nashville? Mm -mm. I've never been, but list. I've always wanted to go. Yeah. I really want to go. In fact, we were going to plan a trip maybe to go there, but we decided to go somewhere else. But at some point I want to go there because I heard it's uh, pretty awesome. So he sends me video. I don't know where he is in Nashville, but he's somewhere downtown and he's walking with his wife and hanging out. And, I, and my cousin, he's, this is the, one of the people I'm closest to and his wife, I love her to death, Sarah. She's amazing. And they love to have a good time, really good people. So they're out hanging out and it's like, it's like a Tuesday night and it's just packed and people are having a great time and they're drinking. And I'm like, did you, uh, did you forget to bring your Z-Botics? He goes, yeah, bro, I'm hurting right now because <laughs> I guess they were drinking yeah. and he woke up and you know, when you're in your forties, you don't feel too good the day after. So I'm like, oh yeah, next time bring your, bring your Zbotics, bro, before you yeah. do something like oh, that. But yeah. the street scene out there is uh, incredible. It looks like a, I showed you guys. Yeah, you showed me that right? video. Yeah. It looks like everybody's having a good time. Out yeah, there. yeah, dude, it looks really fun. Kind of like reminds me of Austin <laughs> when we were there and that one. I don't know the name of the street, but it was Sixth Street. Sixth Street. Uh -huh. Everybody and their neighbor were out. Like, yeah, just walking around and having a good time. Yeah, it does seem like it's got a vibe like that. Have you been there, Doug? You've you're never the been there. Oh, you've never been there. We should plan a trip. I'm done. I heard it's really, really well. I mean, cool. we at one point we were looking for properties out there. It was so hard. That was so competitive. Mm -hmm. It's like it's one of the fastest growing cities in the country. That's and it has yeah, been, it's not and cheap, and it has been for a while. Yeah, yeah, inside Nashville, we were looking. Nashville's for, really expensive. Yeah, Nashville's yeah. expensive. I had no idea. We were looking for suburbs around there as as an investment, and it's just it, even there, it's tough. It was so competitive. Like we had to have an offer in within twenty four hours, and and, and it be over. Yeah. It was just like Jesus. Dude. Where's everybody going? I love the music scene out there. I'd love to hit that up. That was a reason why I was drawn to <laughs> Chicago originally because of the blues and jazz and all that. Like ties. Like it was it was just great to go so out that's, and watch music. That's the other place we were considering going. Going, but is that would that be a fun place to go with kids or no? Yeah, I mean, Taste of Chicago. I don't know if that's in uh, August or not, but um, that was always my favorite. I, I I've been meaning to take my kids there because they have all the vendors and everything on the streets. They got live music going on, and it's just like a big party all day long. So, oh, okay, yeah that that was always a really good time. Yeah, there. so the uh, the options we had were uh, Nashville, Washington D.C., uh, Chicago. And Las Vegas, and Las Vegas was the one that we released like excited about. Which one do you guys think the kids picked? Las Vegas, it's Las Vegas, yeah. of course. Yeah. Well, my kids loved Vegas when we went there for the gymnastic tournament, and I was just like, oh, well, "There's a ton of eyes. stuff for them to do there. There's a lot to do for kids. Yeah, there's I'm a like, ton of stuff to do. For wow, kids. where'd like, you where'd you take? Did you take them through the casinos and stuff? All the different sites? Yeah, I mean, we we didn't really have a lot of time to do the sites because they had so many events and things that we had mm -hmm. to like rush. There's tons to. of museums but and, and museums. shows. And yeah, the shows and the dinner rides. Yeah. You know, isn't there a like amusement? Isn't stuff? there like a a place where you can eat dinner and there's like a medieval show or fight right in front of you yeah, yeah. there's I've this never, there's okay. this new um hotel there i think that they're constructing that's like like a big like moon and so you get like these moon rovers that you can oh, really? uh ride in and so they're they're making it very family friendly like in some areas of vegas yeah i the thing that you don't want to do i think is walk outside the strip because i don't know how it is now but i remember as a kid my parents took us uh, for a family trip. And I remember we walked the strip and there's the dudes oh, hanging out, the, the flyers for strippers. <laughs> Dude, for stripper. I, and I remember I was like 15 years I mean, old and I, got, like, uh, I was collecting this flyers. It's no worse than you walking down the street of San Francisco with your kids. Oh, man. Well, you're not getting well, flyers for strippers. You you're just, not getting you're just, flyers for strippers. You're just stepping over yeah, heroin needles. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you just got to slap <laughs> the needles away. Yeah. No. Or, no. Some, or some bum like pissing or shitting <laughs> on the a, sidewalk. That's like, true. I don't know. I think, I think I'd rather have my kids walking in Las Vegas than San Francisco. Yeah. No, I just remember as a yep. 15 year old kid, I was like, you know, my parents are like, oh, they're not looking. I'll take that flyer in my pocket. I'll take that flyer in my pocket. Remember, this is before the internet. Yeah. Hey, where are we at with the uh, baby formula? Like, I, is it still a shortage? I have my, my and, buddies. Are and I didn't know this. Did you guys know the regulations around it are ridiculous? Like, they won't allow it to be imported from, I think, from outside the U.S. or this crazy strict regulations. One of the reasons why we're at a shortage is because these regulations constrict the ability to import and produce. So they're trying to change that to, to bring us more supply. Speaking of which, Serenity Kids has a baby formula. Really? And it's the A2 whole, the A2 uh, protein. So the whole milk from the A2, which is easier to, di to digest. So that would be the one. That's the one I'm looking at for. If I'm we surprised they're not sold out because of ever the shortage. You they have think. them. 
Yeah, it I looks know, like they have. I know. Them. I know. Doug got on there to look the other day when we were talking about it. I would. I would have thought for sure they would have been sold yep, out. Yep. That's, that's crazy. So what is the okay? The is it the main reason because China produces forty or more percent? I think is what I saw. Uh, so there were obviously supply chain issues and constrictions because of the pandemic. Now that we're starting to feel. Um, but also there's regulations that make it very hard to import and get from other places. So we have this limited way to get the supply. And so once that got hit, we're totally screwed. So what they're trying to do now is loosen up these regulations to allow. I mean, it, it, well, what about supplies? the other 60% that's, that's manufactured or made here in the U S like they, we can't speed up the production. There's not a way to, I don't know. know the exact details, but I do know that a lot of them got <laughs> affected because of all the shutdowns and, and stuff mm. that were, you know, that happened. Hey, real quick, uh, do you like soda but hate the sugar? Hate the fact that it contributes to poor health? Try Olipop. So Olipop is very low calorie, no artificial sweeteners, and it actually contains components that are good for gut health. So a can of Olipop is like 35 calories. It's got fiber in it and compounds that help your gut. And it's got incredible flavors. My favorite is Tropical Punch, but they have like strawberry vanilla, vintage cola, much more. And it tastes incredible. Again, no artificial sweeteners. This is a healthy soda that's good for your gut. It's amazing. Go check them out. Go to mindpumppartners.com, click on Olipop, and then use the code mindpump for 20% off your purchase. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Xavier from California. Xavier, how can we help you? Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, this is a uh... It's pretty awesome, honestly. I'm not gonna lie; I'm a little uh, nervous. <laughs> but um, yeah, I've been listening to you guys for about a month now. I've learned a lot. I've unlearned a lot. And uh, something that I've been uh, kind of like getting into recently has been, um, you know, like I guess a little backstory. I've been training pretty consistently since I was in high school. Um, I was pretty chubby in high school, and then like one day, I just kind of got tired of being out of shape, and uh, so I got into. I started playing football. That didn't really help. Started wrestling. That definitely did help. <laughs> and then I got into MMA and uh, I kind of fell in love with it. So I started doing that for about uh, 10 years, so went pro for a little while. Um, and then listening to a lot of uh, professional fighters and listening to like their habits and all this stuff, I started to like really start to figure out like uh, fitness and nutrition. And I got really like uh, obsessive with that and started to uh, kind of understand the, the correlation between your physical health and your mental health. And, um, you know, eventually kind of like hit home for me. I think I was listening to you, like Jordan Peterson on, on Rogan. He like was talking about how he went carnivore and then he was like, what, what, it was salad that was doing this to me, like making him like depressed and all this stuff. And I started kind of thinking like, you know, like I, I kind of like struggled with the self image issues for a little while. Um, I was never really satisfied with the way I looked, even though I was like in the gym training three, four hours a day, I was never like shredded like some of the like some of the other guys that i was training with and i'm like what the heck what am i doing wrong um so then uh, um i don't know like one thing that prompted me to, to ask this question is like just recently i've been kind of like really like trying to figure out and understand like you know like i feel like my my training is pretty consistent my diet is pretty consistent um i guess like some areas that i'm lacking in are probably my sleep not gonna lie and uh, I do tend to binge pretty hard when I get anxious or um, or upset on, on on you know I guess lately it's been pop tarts, and I just wanted to like to like figure out like you know is it like like how strict do I need to be to like kind of like not affect myself in that way, and like you know is it is it like your physical health and your mental health really that like tightly related, or like is there something else I'm just like kind of like avoiding or not dealing with. Yeah. Short answer is yes. Yeah, that's a good question. So first <laughs> off, I, I want to say, Xavier, that um, none of us are mental health experts, right? We're we're fitness experts. So we're going to speak from there, okay? So I just wanted to, to say that first. But um, the data is pretty clear that physical health and mental health are very intricately connected. Studies, Lots of studies have been done on this. They're very, very closely connected. So those two things go hand in hand. And remember the mind or the, is connected to the brain. The brain is connected to the body. So if your health is poor, um, then you tend to see it on, on the mental um, health side as well. Um, do you now, so I'm going to speak from personal experience. Again, I'm not a mental health expert, but do you have, uh, first let's talk about your diet. And I'm going to talk about things that I know tend to have a negative effect on things like anxiety and depression. Do you use stimulants throughout the day, like caffeine? Uh, in the morning. Yeah. Okay. So 
if you're having a lot of anxiety, the first thing I would do is I would slowly reduce and then eliminate caffeine. So whatever baseline of anxiety you have, a stimulant like caffeine will tend to make much worse. So I would slowly uh, reduce my my caffeine intake. And it's going to suck for about a week, but then you'll probably notice um, some you, benefit. Use the red juice to help you out. Yeah. Help, help you out. Uh, Organifi red juice is really good about that. Uh, I, I, in fact, I'm weaning down caffeine and, and I'm using it right now and it's really making um, a big difference. So you can try that as a substitute at first. But even then, I would go off of that eventually because you'd want to have you know nothing that can be stimulatory at all. The second thing is, you talked about sleep. Sleep has a profound impact on mental health, profound, to the point where if it's bad enough, it can actually cause severe mental illness. And there's been studies done on this as well. So I would prioritize my sleep at night by, by having a sleep routine about an hour and a half before bed. So an hour and a half before bed, I would put on blue light blocking glasses or turn off all the electronics go by candlelight. I would not look at social media, not read or watch the news, allow my body to prepare for sleep so I could get some good recuperative sleep. That usually makes a pretty big difference. And then the third thing is, do you have some kind of a spiritual practice? And it could be religion, it could be meditation, but do you have a daily practice where you take a 40,000 foot view of your life where you can look at everything, uh, you know, like, like when people pray, right. Or when people meditate, they step outside of their body. They can look at everything and identify things that they're grateful for process emotions or challenges that happen during the day. Do you, do you have anything like that on a regular basis? I, not on a regular basis. Like that's probably like, that's something I've like gone on and off with and like tried and, and like fell off. And, uh, yeah. you know, it's funny that you say that like my, uh, my girlfriend, she does that. And like, she, I've noticed a, a bit of a difference with her like uh, throughout the day. What does she do? I mean, she, she, uh, she, she journals every morning and she'll write things that she's like grateful for and thankful for. And I believe she does it at night as well. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like she's more, she was very spiritual and then very into like meditation and, uh, and breath work and things like that, which I like, kind of like introduced me to it as well. Or at least like, I used to think it was all like BS until like, I kind of like started looking into it and thinking about it and like, well, maybe there's something to this, Yeah. but uh, I just never was consistent enough with it. I That's guess. right. It's, it's just like exercise. So yeah. like if I was talking about the benefits of exercise and someone says, oh, I tried it a few times, I didn't really notice anything. It's the right. same thing with the spiritual practice. You have to be very consistent and disciplined about it. And you can do like 10 minutes a day, just 10 minutes every morning do it. Maybe, maybe you can add another five minutes before bed, just kind of set yourself for the next day. Um, g- give that a shot. And then the last thing I'll say is this, the, the, the two people that I turn to the most for this are Arthur Brooks. So we have two, I think we've done two episodes with Arthur Brooks, but he also has a lot of his own content. He's an expert on happiness. So this is, this is his, this is what he does uh, for a living and he studies it and He's got some great content on it. So, so you can find the episode with we had with Arthur Brooks, or you can also look him up and read some of his books or some of his articles. He's really, really good. And then the second person, this is just personal for me, is, is Bishop Barron. We did a podcast with Bishop Barron. He's a obviously a Catholic bishop, but the spiritual side of what he talked about really had a profound impact on me, uh, and it made a big difference. And you know, not having a sense, a strong sense of purpose or meaning in your life, or not having something that you specifically are targeting, in other words, like worshiping God, for example, or having a top value that is not an earthly thing, that will help direct you in the right way as well, because otherwise you're going to move towards your top value. And it tends to be earthly things that don't have a lot of meaning or purpose behind them. And that can cause a lot of problems uh, for some people. So that, and that's just my personal experience. Again, this is not my expertise, but that would be the direct, if you were my friend, that would be the direction that I would point you. Yeah. I would echo a bit of <clears throat> spiritual practice and meditation. I know you've, you've been able to, you've expressed that you've been able to kind of see the benefit in that. It took me a long time to see the benefit in that. Um, it, it took a multiple attempts. And honestly, for me, um, it, it was more of like bringing in a tangible uh, way to experience that a little bit more uh, deeply. And that was where the, the, the cold immersion, the, the cold ice baths really kind of played a factor to that, even a cold shower where it, it, it really forced on the, the breathing, the, the, the way that I could actually become more present, uh, uh, you, you know, here to where uh, all the chatter and the noise and, and things that, um, you know, my mind was just constantly racing anxiety and, um, you know, and all that was, was able to kind of shut down. So 
Um, you know, it's just, it, that's, again, that's another practice, a little bit more of an extreme practice than just sitting there and, and being able to breathe and meditate, which, you know, I highly suggest, but, you know, if you have trouble with that, that's something that I would, you know, look into as well. Xavier, can I ask, um, have you connected what makes you feel depressed and anxious? Um, uh, well, you, like you guys mentioned purpose there. Um, and that's honestly probably those are the usually the things I think about the most when I start to get really like anxious and stuff where like, I start to really kind of wonder like, what the heck, what, why, what's the point? Right. Like, why do I feel this way? Like what, and I mean, that's something I've been kind of struggling with lately is like, what is like my purpose? Um, and, uh, how old, yeah, how old are you? How old are you? 29. Okay. Yeah. You know, Xavier, I'll tell you a story. I had a client once, uh, he was, uh, how old was he? 17. And he struggled with this um, quite a bit uh, to the point where he actually developed a, a, a drug problem and his parents sent him to one of those camps where kids go, they'll send their kids to, and then they'll, you know, try to, I don't know, set them straight for lack of a better term. And what, you know what, and he came back a different person, but here's, not, I'm not recommending you go to the camp, but I'm going to tell you what he did. <laughs> when he came back, I said, what made the biggest difference for you? And he says, they put me in charge of a group. And I said, what? And he goes, Yeah. When I got there after a few weeks, I led a group of five other younger kids. And he says, and I immediately felt a sense of purpose for these kids. And it, mm -hmm. it changed everything. So what's the takeaway? Serve some, serve other people, maybe volunteer or go do something for someone else. That, that, is, a, 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 that is a sense of purpose, right? You're helping someone, you're volunteering at maybe, uh, you know, we're, we're, uh, what, what are they called? Those home old people homes. I can't think of the right term right now. Um, or you can go volunteer and, and feed people, or you could do, you could volunteer, you know, MMA training. You said you're an MMA, you know, you did it for 10 years. Maybe you teach some people for free or whatever. Oftentimes that's what people need. It's the opposite, right? It's the opposite of no purpose. The opposite of that is serving others. And, and that's, Usually that usually set people in the right direction. So just just another, you know, again, based off my experience. Or seek a profession that does that, right? So doing a looking for professions where you feel like you are serving somebody or helping others, I think is a great way. I also think keep in mind, you uh and I'm sure you don't feel that because I know this tends to happen when you get ready for your thirties, people start to go, Oh shit, like I'm officially like grown up. I need to have my shit together. You, bro, I'm I'm forty right now and I barely feel like I fully understand my purpose. Like uh, part of it is just doing the work is is doing the work putting work in and and not there's there's something about the your generation that they that this whole movement of like you got to find a career right now that serves your purpose and finds that you know right now you need to to learn to learn what you even want try shit out fail at it you know think you think you like something do it then find out you don't like it like don't get so hung up on um, you need to have this answer of what your lifelong purpose is. Some people spend a majority of their life finding, looking for that. So uh, don't allow that to cause this anxiety and depression. Be okay with the fact that maybe it hasn't fallen into your lap yet and you still got a lot of, a lot of work, a lot of growing, a lot of internal self-awareness stuff to go through before maybe you yeah. find out what that is. Be a, be be a little empathetic with what yourself. In your, what in your life has given you that zest for life? Is there anything you can think of that you've done in the past or now where you're like, you know, when I do that thing or when I did that thing, I really felt alive. Is there something you can list? Uh, I mean, yeah, it was it was it was fighting. Honestly, it was. Uh, I was actually talking to my girl about this uh, yesterday, where I was just like, there's like, there just isn't anything else that uh, that gave me that. It was. I mean, a lot of it was like. Like when you're, when you're in there, when you're in a cage or in a ring or whatever, like it, you, you literally just can't think of anything else. Right. Like it all, everything else kind of like just goes away and it's almost like uh euphoric, like, you know, so that was like probably like, I, I guess like the most stressful time of my life, right up until I got in the cage and then ends up being like the, the like most Zen Part of my oh, life. listen, Xavier. So uh, Arthur Brooks wrote a book called From Strength to Strength. I think it would be valuable for you. So maybe you don't want to go fight again because you're like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to get banged up or whatever. Yes. But you know what you can do? You can go teach. It's almost the same thing. Also, keep in mind what you just said, though, too, right? So what what made you feel that you, you got your the most ultimate present moment of your life is when you're fighting? Mm -hmm. And so that's what the meditation and the spiritual practice is, is we, we focus so much on our past and the future. 
Very few people have the discipline to be in the now. Meditation, and that's really the the the, the power of a spiritual practice mm-hmm. or meditation, is it teaches you to be in the present. The reason why you love MMA so much is because you get out of your own fucking head. You stop thinking about what you didn't do last year and what you need to do to find your purpose. To And it's like, this guy's going to fucking kill me. I don't want to think about anything else but this dude that's right in front of me. And you, yeah, get, this, exactly. and you get this ultimate euphoric feeling. But what that is, is that you're, you, you are, you've never been so present than in that moment when you shut that cage. You can find that through, through meditation, through spiritual practices, and through discipline and self-awareness. So... That's really what is the connection there. Maybe it ends up being your purpose and you find a career like Sal's alluding to where you teach kids. It doesn't even like have that. to be a career. But I, I just, think if you did it once or twice a week and, and you helped I, an amateur do their first fight, I bet you'd get a similar feeling. Yeah, you know? I just want you to understand that, though. The reason why you feel that is because there's probably nothing else in your life you've ever felt so present than at that moment, and that is what we're what we're seeking. Xavier, you talked a little bit about diet. I'm going to send you our intuitive nutrition guide because I think that's going to help you with uh, some of the ways that you, your, some of the relationships you have with food. So I'm going to send that to you. I think the, in, the content in that's going to help you with the, with the, the diet aspect. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. I appreciate that. You got it, man. Good luck. Okay. Yeah. Th- thank you guys so much. That was, that was very enlightening. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks. Right. Yeah. That one's a, that's a, yeah, that's tough. I, I, I can see though, and I've, I've known a lot of people like this and I felt like this at one point in my life and I've on and off, right. Where, you just don't have that higher meaning and purpose. And if you don't have that, the hard parts of life are really hard. Did you really feel that way? There's some times. I feel like it's a generational thing. Don't you feel that way? I feel like older people always yeah. say that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know it that might be more, worse. You might no, you're right. It is worse. It's I mean, okay. Anxiety so, and depression are higher. So I'm now on I'm I'm now on my third generation of people that have worked underneath me, right? So I've mm-hmm. I've 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 had people, my peers work for me. I've had the generation coming up, yeah. which are millennials working for me. And then I've also had now the the Gen Z work for me. And I I see a, a, a little resurgence in Gen Z of being more like us in the just like fucking do the work and then we'll figure out this. Yeah. But the, the the millennial gap, the the age range, there there was this movement around like, yeah. f- like that wasn't communicated to me very much. It was like when I was coming up, it was like fucking work. Yeah. Work v- very Old. Gary V-esque. Are you hungry enough and willing to fucking eat shit or are you soft? Like just yeah. get out there, eat shit, figure it out. The purpose will come as you're, as you're grinding totally. and working away. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's definitely. I've noticed the same thing in terms of like really looking at the world's problems and looking at environmental problems and looking at political problems. Things like you have no control everything over. Everything you have no control over right. and like just taking all that on on top of like your day-to-day process. It's like get back to to cleaning your own room, you know, the, the whole Jordan Peterson thing. Like it's it's about like addressing the immediate things that you have control over every single day that makes the most impact. And I think from there is where the purpose starts to really unfold itself. Yep. And yes, it is like service. It, it is of these other things, but it's it's in your immediate sphere. So your 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 own community is really what you need to consider. Yeah, and if you look, for this is uh, largely for young men, but this is true for women as well. Um, part, most of this, which is, uh, lift weights, get some sunshine, don't watch pornography, avoid lots of substances and have a spiritual practice and get good sleep. Like do those things and you'll find you feel much better. A lot of people feel terrible because they're inside all day long. Mm -hmm. They don't exercise properly. They're, they're numbing their senses with pornography and shitty food. Uh, that you know they're overdoing the stimulants the or the news, They're constantly inundated, and they're themselves. just and then they're just on social media getting yeah. the dopamine without the oxytocin. Um, they're not connecting with people. Of course, you're going to feel terrible. It's like you're you're so against your own nature. We're humans. We're social creatures. We're supposed to do a certain element, and we're supposed to have challenge. We're supposed to challenge ourselves. Control the challenge. Go work out hard a few times. You know, go do something that is challenging yet has got some purpose. Like volunteer work. You know, that's a big one. Like you go help people. It's hard. You gotta wake up early, gotta do this thing or whatever. But then you're serving other people. Like that, those are those are things that I think pay back dividends w- worth way more than the time invested in doing those things. Our next caller is Alex from Italy. Alex, how's it going? How can we help you? Hey guys, um, uh, first off, I want to thank uh, Adam, Justin, and Doug for all the content you put out and for all the info. And then uh, as last uh, salva, I'm gonna say in Italian. Grazie per tutta l'informazione che mi avete dato. Eh, mi ha cambiato tutta la vita. 
eh, ho trovato un bel equilibrio tra lavoro, famiglia e ok, grazie mille. Uh, you, you want me, you want me, you're tra- welcome. You want me to translate? For yeah, you? he said that I'm I the best, tra- he said I'm the best host <laughs> and everyone else sucks. That's not what he, tell what he, tell that's what, what, he, what he said. What he really said that's is, said. Sal, I know What's all this, happening? Happening? I know you've been that. working out really hard, but you're still not as big as Adam. All right, go ahead, go ahead and ask your question, Alex. Thank you very much. In English though, please. Yeah, yeah, in English, don't worry. No, so, um, like I said, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bar owner, I have a family and I'm a hockey player and uh, uh, I play, uh, I pr- hey Nia, hey, sorry for my daughter, she, she, should, she should be sleeping right now because it's eight at night, so <laughs> um, sorry, no, so um, yeah, and we do practice four times a week, we, play, we have two games a week and the only day off is Sunday and uh, normally I always, uh, I would always overtrain, you know, through with my workouts and hockey. But uh, since I've been following your programs, I've learned to really just work out once a week and really keep it simple and concentrate on the sport itself. But uh, for example, last year uh, during the season, I just, I just uh, could not, my legs could not recover from, uh, and like I said, I would really just work out once, uh, once a week. And I was wondering if you guys could like have some tips or a help, you know, because I do want to play hockey until I'm 40. So I need to find a solution. Yeah, Alex. So, um, you're on the right track when you're in season once a week is, is plenty, but I'm going to add a little more. If your legs feel heavy, if they feel like they just, they're not recovering fast enough, I wouldn't work out your legs. I would just do mobility uh, for your legs. So when you do your workout, the one workout a week on top of what you're doing during the season, you can train your upper body. It sounds like you're recovering okay with your upper body. But what I would focus on with legs is just mobility, just stretching, just recovery type stuff. And then when you go off season, then you can start focusing on on the heavy training. But because hockey is so lower body leg intensive. Um, it sounds like you just don't have enough to, and that's okay. In season, the goal is to minimize injury. What you yeah. don't want to do is approach your workouts. Preservation. Yeah. You don't want to approach your workouts in season. Like you're trying to build strength and muscle because that's just too much all at once. So in season yeah. it's, it's injury avoidance. And so the best way to avoid injury, if you feel this way, mobility, stretching, recovery based stuff, and then do some upper body stuff. If that feels okay. Yeah, because I, like I said, because I'm doing Maps Prime at least uh, 20 to 30 minutes a day, six times a week. It really helped a lot. And uh, so I guess I could like do like uh, just uh, work on the mobility on my squat, I guess. Yes. And, but, yeah. like, but like not even like deadlifts and nothing like to, I just you don't you don't you know what you, Alex, you're not a you're not a weekend warrior athlete. You're like a, a legit athlete, bro. You're I mean, you're you're doing six days a week of intense playing. I mean, it's like you're practicing super demanding. Yeah. You're practicing four and then games too. So you're talking about hours of intense training on your body. You are not some, you know, some kid who's just picking up the hockey stick on the weekend every now and then, and then trying to also strength. Like literally you are a like full-time athlete, bro. So you're like, if you're, if I'm training a full-time athlete like this, we're and we're in season, so you're practicing four times a week, and you're playing two times a week. We're not doing hardly any strength training. It's mostly all mobility and recovery work. I'm just trying to take care of your body so it can perform the best it can those two game days every single week. And we're this is not the time to build muscle. This is not the time to deadlift and squat. Really, I need you to feel fresh and good. Yeah, every you save time. that for the off season. Yeah, and then in the off season we can talk about picking up your volume and training and really starting to build some muscle and work on some things. But right now, season man. I mean, uh, we tell people that to scale down to potentially one time a week, but it's one time or no time, to be honest with you. You you, you don't necessarily need it. Yeah, I would do the exercises that you feel strong and good doing. So if that means- Yeah, upper body, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So if that means no no leg workouts, that's fine. It's not like your legs aren't getting a workout, by the way. It's six days a week, you're you're training your legs (laughs) with a lot of strength, stamina. And then the off season, you can can focus on building up uh, some muscle and some strength. But in season, one of the biggest mistakes athletes will do is they try to improve their strength and conditioning with their workouts while they're 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 playing games and they're practicing a lot. It's like, man, that's just too much. Mm-hmm. 
That's, Perfect. That's that's it right there, Alex. Do you take any supplements? Do you take creatine? Because I think that would benefit you as well. Yeah, I do. I take creatine, uh, six grams a day. I take vitamin D, omega three, and uh, magnesium. Yeah, you're you're good stuff. Yeah, you're you're, you're good, my friend. I, back off and, on the and my protein and my protein intake is uh, uh, around 180 grams to 200 grams, and the rest is carbs because okay. I, I I know that with the fats I'm not. My body doesn't react that good. Yeah. Um, well, I'm sure if you live in Italy, you're, you're getting, you're probably still getting olive oil in your dishes and stuff like that. Which yeah, is, yeah, it's already. Yeah, which is. Enough. What part of Italy are you in, by the way? Well, actually, I'm in the the opposite of you know, of your home. <laughs> I, I'm in northern Italy. Awesome. I have some family yeah. up. How far north are you? I have some family up in Milan. Oh, really? Well, from Milan, we actually like because we play against Milan. It's like a two hour drive, two and a half. Oh, good deal. Yeah, yeah. Good deal. Well, hey, thanks for calling in, Alex. Is there any of our programs that you, you would like to have access to? Because I could send you something. I, well, I, um, I have one I want to give you. The programs, I, I have, I have uh, Maps Prime, Maps Prime Pro, Anabolic, Aesthetic, Performance, and the new symmetry. Oh, I was going to say so, symmetry. So if you got uh, symmetry, yeah, you got that, symmetry. That was the one good. I was going to give you. That's the one I haven't done yet. That's the only one I haven't done yet. Okay. It just came out new, and I have to, I'm right now I'm finishing performance. So symmetry is going to be great for you. Great follow when, up. Yeah, when you I finish, can wait. I can wait. Yeah, yeah. When you off finish, season, do that. Yeah, yeah. You're going to love that one. Yeah. Cool. All right, Alex. Thank, well, thank uh, if, I, was, if I can ask, uh, could I go in your? Because I know you're on Facebook. You have a group. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Where I can ask questions. Yeah, yeah. Know, I, I really follow you guys, and I'm passionate about fitness so if you know if, if i ever have questions or something or i read something absolutely absolutely that, well, doug doug's gonna hook you up we're gonna set you up on the forum we'll put for you free. on the forum for free thank you okay awesome, alex. alex thank you thanks for calling him ciao bye ciao. yeah that was uh you know that's I, I made that mistake training athletes early on i remember i'd get a, a new athlete and i'd be like yeah i'm gonna get them so fit and they're in season and then they'd get hurt and i feel looking back I'm like, oh my god it was probably my fault well, it's so tempting because you can put so much demand on on athletes and they'll and do it's it it's fun yeah and it's fun they'll do whatever basically you you construct for them to do but really as a good coach you have to be able to be very conscious of how to preserve them throughout the entire season not well, just right out the gates the point that i was trying to make that i think is so important with him is we've had we've had lots of questions like this and a lot of times it's somebody who's doing a sport like three or four times a week and then we allow them we say oh you could probably train yeah, this is one. six days a week yes yeah, six days a week of intense yeah, like full time yeah he's got i mean, I two, mean two games which, which hockey games are over two hours yes so he's got over two hours of like intense and then intense. four practices yeah so he is hammering so one day of and of, you know in his practice they're doing leg exercises no of course yeah so yeah he's getting uh he's different like he's a, he's at a he's more like a professional athlete that we're talking to then sometimes we get people that are like oh i love basketball or i love to do these sports I love to play this sport and they're doing it three, four times a week and they're trying to m mold a program around yep. it. That that person, okay, one day, two day, potentially a week of strength training, they're going to be okay. Somebody who's six days intensely training uh, as an athlete, like you, you don't want to be doing any real heavy strength training. Our next caller is Brian from California. Brian, what's happening, man? How can we help you? How's it going, guys? Appreciate you having me on. Cool. All right. You guys, uh, you guys have definitely changed my life for the better, so I appreciate you. I used to be able to DM messages to Sal on Instagram, but then his memes got too far. So. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. so here I am. Finally, all those reports I was sending in. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm taking all the DMs. <laughs> well, so uh, a, a little bit of background, um, just to give you guys some context. Um, like going into college, I was just, I mean, grew up super skinny. So I was 6'3", 150 pounds. Uh, I mean, used to have to go through the shower twice just to get wet. Uh, so all I cared about was the scale going up and you guys have talked about, a lot about this, but, um, so I wanted to see 200 on the scale and I finally did it like by my senior year, but my body fat percentage was way higher than I wanted, like bad programming, didn't eat very well. Um, so then I discovered Spartan racing and I got super into that. Um, and then basically lost all my muscle. I was back down to 180 and little lower body fat percentage was eating better. Um, but you know, as you guys know, all that cardio and movement and stuff, um, hard to keep the muscle on. Um, so then I was just kind of figured I'm, I'm just naturally skinny. That's how it's always going to be. 
Well, then over the pandemic, I got super lucky. I found uh, some some uh, equipment that I had in the backyard, discovered you guys, and uh, just focused on getting strong. And I was able to put on about 20 pounds of lean mass. Um, yeah, just, just like listening to you guys, your programming, uh, hitting my protein levels, all that stuff. So uh, again, like super grateful for you guys' information. Um, but uh, my, my question was, you guys talk a lot about like mini bulks and cuts. Um, and for somebody like me who like, as I'm building more muscle, I'm leaning out even more. Um, what would the benefit of any, like if any, uh, for me to go on a cut, like I, it's not really something that I would really prioritize, but well, you know what you may be doing and you don't even realize you may actually be doing many cuts because you said you're leaning out while you're also kind of bulking. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just, I mean, it's not hard for me to, eat a lot. I, I typically don't track calories, but I did just to kind of get a, an idea of my baseline. And like on an average day, like I could easily eat more, but 5,000 calories is not very hard for me to hit. And it's all good, good food, a lot of protein, uh, real whole foods. I mean, you, so, didn't, you didn't tell the audience this, but I, I see it written down. You're 6'3", 206 now and 9% body fat. Yeah. I mean, you probably look pretty dope, bro. What are you trying to do? What do you want? What do you, what do you, what else do you want? Adam wants a picture. <laughs> yeah. I, I sent a picture oh, in yeah. because you guys talked about like the, you know, how the, the scale can lie. Uh, so I put the last time I was in the two hundreds compared to now. And it's, it's pretty crazy to see the difference. Yeah. You, you know what the benefit of a mini cut would be for someone like you? Hmm. Getting your body to be resensitized to calories. Cause it's probably pretty hard to eat more than 5,000 calories to gain anymore, right? That's why I said I think he's probably naturally doing many cuts. I bet he misses his target sometimes, and that's why he leans yeah. out. I, I would I would do like a – I mean, you could do like a like a two, like two weeks of, of like 3,000 3, calories, and then when you go okay. back up to five, you just see this just muscle come on your body. Um, you can even do that for a little longer, just get real shredded. But it can be okay. – you know, and this is not common. Like most people are dealing with uh, a metabolism that's slower than they want. Uh, mm-hmm. It's not as common to have someone like you, which this is more like me, like myself or even Adam. I remember when Adam was competing, he ran into this problem where he just couldn't eat more because his, his body was burning so many calories. So you can actually purposely get your body to be kind of, you know, we use the, use the term resensitize, but really what you're doing is just slowing down your metabolic rate a little bit is by okay. doing a cut for a few weeks and then going back to eating more calories. And that'll get your body more sensitive again to four or 5,000 calories. Otherwise, you get, it's, it's hard, right? 5,000 calories a day, every single day, 6,000. It's like, oh my gosh, I can't possibly just keep eating this much. So that would be the benefit of a shortcut would be to resensitize your body. And what it'll feel like is you'll feel like a sponge. After two or three weeks of doing that, you'll introduce more calories and you'll just, oh my God, your muscles will fill out and you'll feel just so anabolic from doing so. That would be the only benefit. Now, if you don't really care, um, just keep going the way you're going. I mean, you're, yeah, I, you're crushing it. That's uh, that would be my Thank thing. You. Is unless you really are trying. That's why I asked what your kind of goal was because you're in a great place. Two hundred six nine percent body fat, six three. I'm sure you feel good. You look good. You're eating five thousand calories, which probably gives you all kinds of uh, flexibility in your diet to where you can have some fo- foods that you enjoy every once in a while and don't feel like it. It just sticks to you. Like you're in a great place right now. So. You don't necessarily need to do anything. I mean, but to continue continue on with what you're doing, unless you have specific goals that you're trying to achieve. I mean, or if you're trying to continue to put on more mass and you want to be bigger, um, well, then with Sal's point, I mean, there, there's going to be tremendous value for you for almost intentionally slowing the metabolism down by going into a cut. That way, when you go to reintro- reintroduce those calories again, you'll you'll put on some size coming out. Interesting. Okay. I, yeah. I didn't really think of it like that. I just, I guess my fear was going on a cut. Like I didn't want to lose any mass because that is my goal is to like continue building yeah, naturally. Yeah, you you, you, you'll, you'll, lose a, you'll lose a little bit of size just because you'll be a little depleted. But the, mm-hmm. like, like I said, it's like a two week, like two weeks, like do it for like two weeks. Then when you okay. bump your calories back up, you'll go back up to where you were and then probably add another two or three pounds of lean body mass. You did just say something, though, that I'll, I'll give you a heads up because th- this will mess with you. Uh, when you go from 5,000 calories down to 3,000 calories, uh, two things are going to happen that are going to give you a mind fuck. Uh, one, okay. in the bodybuilding world, we call this like flat, right? Because you're depleted of right. carbohydrates and calories. So your muscle bellies are not going to be as full. So you're going to look not as jacked as what you did just a week ago, that'll probably uh, fuck with your head. The second thing that will fuck with your head is you're not getting as much fuel, so you're not going to probably be as strong. So you might see your your lifts go down a tiny bit. If you can manage your head 
and just stick stay the course for about two weeks or so and then go back, I think you'll see tremendous benefit. But what happens and what we, used to happen to me when yeah, I was like in, two days in, was yeah, that? I would freak out. I would like, oh my God, I go to my bed. It'd, be, it'd be bench day and all of a sudden I'm, I'm down 30 pounds on my bench and I look flat. I'm like, fuck this. I'm not, I don't want to do a cut. Uh, this is the yeah. opposite. And, and you get in your head thinking that like muscle is falling off your body and it's all muscle that I'm losing right now. It's like, no, nah, that's not the case. You're low calorie. So your, butt, your muscle bellies are not filled out. Your energy isn't all the way there. So your strength isn't there. That's all that's happening right yeah. now. Your body is not breaking down and losing muscle that fast. Uh, so I, I, I think if you can get past that mental hurdle, I think there'll be lots of benefits for you to actually do this for a couple of weeks. Okay. Awesome. I'll just make sure I don't do it right before a pool party or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, actually, or load up right before there you, you go. To, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you do a two, uh, okay. do, a yeah. two, do a two week mini cut and then do like three or four day bulk right into the pool party. And you'll look amazing, especially so that, if you're lean. So that I used to, so long when I first started my Instagram, I used to give these Vegas tips because I trained a couple people that I actually trained guys that would that would hire me to get them ready for Vegas to peak for Vegas. Yeah, to peak for Vegas. <laughs> I'm actually going. I'm going this weekend. So oh, okay, okay. Tuesday. So here's your tip. Okay, so so go into your cut right now. What Sal said, and then the okay. day before, load up on calories. So the day, okay. so right now, start start peeling down the calories, get real low. And, and then the day before, load up on calories. So then you'll probably push all the way up to like 6,000 calories the day before. Yeah, don't, don't eat a bunch of garbage, though. Don't mess up your stomach. I've seen, yeah, I've yeah, seen no, people I've, do that. Like, just get diarrhea. And that's, it just ruins yeah, everything. Exactly. Yeah, and, yeah. That's actually, and that's actually the thing. I, I don't know if you saw in the email. I threw that in there, too, because I'm always sharing your guys' information. Um, Sal, like I've bought a bunch of copies of your book. I give it out. I just like as far as the calorie thing, um, I don't know if you guys – I just don't hear you guys talk a ton about it. Like – there is a huge difference between doing it with good quality food versus just yeah, calories sure. in general. Yeah, sure. here's the here's the difference. First off, uh, you start with the, the basics, calories, right? Not all calories are the same because then you go right. down and then you have macronutrients, proteins, yeah. fats, and carbohydrates. But then even then, it's not all the same because then you got to go to how do these foods make me feel? Everybody ignores mm -hmm. that. They think, oh, I'm, if I look the same, it's the same. No, it's not. If your macros and calories are identical, even if you get the same body fat percentage and you look the same, 99% of the time, eating whole natural foods means you're going to feel better. You're going to have better energy, more stable, better digestion, and ultimately that results in a better looking physique in the long term. So that's really what you want to pay attention to. So yeah, I mean, I could, you know, we could go in a lab, create a bunch of shakes that have the right amount of proteins, fats, carbs, and calories, and then just live off that. I guarantee you, you're not going to feel the same. So you're not going right. to feel the same. And after a year or two, you won't look the same because the way you feel will start to dictate your behaviors and those behaviors will change and then forget oh, about yeah. it. So, so that's, yeah, that's, would, that's the way you want to communicate it. The, the first time I got over 200 pounds, I was just distraught that all the goldfish and chicken nuggets weren't turning straight into muscle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I didn't understand it. That's, that's literally Justin's favorite lunch. Yeah. <laughs> just add string cheese and we're good. <laughs> <laughs> A little ketchup on the side. He's ready right to go. On. Right on. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, man. Hey, thank you guys so much. I appreciate you. You got nice it, brother. Man, Have man. fun in Vegas. Right. Hey, thank you. Take care. You got it. What a great place to be, huh? Yeah, totally. I, oh. uh, but you know, the, the, a lot of people don't don't identify with this because like, oh, poor him. He's got to eat five thousand calories. But you know, hey, look, it's it's challenging too. It's hey, like, grass is always greener on the other side. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. It's it's not super easy. I like the second part where you asked about the like the food differences, and that's just it. It's just it. Look, you can eat the same amount of calories. This, this is what my one of my big issues with the IIFYM crowd initially. It's like, yeah, okay, your macros are the same, calories are the same. You're not going to feel the same. You just don't. Your energy is going to be off. You're not going to feel as good. Your behavior is going to change as a result. It's not a great long-term strategy. And then I'll argue this. I've known a lot of stage competitors who have who have literally tracked this. You're one of them, Adam, mm -hmm. where you ate a diet that was identical. It just had included more processed foods versus one that was a whole natural food. You don't look the same. Yeah. You just don't look the same. Our next caller is Rob from Canada. Rob, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey guys, uh, thanks for having me on. Really appreciate it. You got it. All right. Um, so I'm 36. Um, I've been just started doing jujitsu a couple of years ago, and I have my first competition coming up. Um, 242 pounds, about 18 percent body fat. I'm just looking to become more explosive because I'm going to be in a uh, weight class with guys who are actually quite a bit heavier than me. I'll probably be at like the bottom of the the weight class of super heavy. 
Okay, so the Sal has his purple belt. Yeah, thanks, Je- thanks, Adam. Got to remind people every once in a while. <laughs> Actually, no, no purple belt, white belt. Uh, no, no, thanks, no. thanks to COVID, it's taken forever. <laughs> oh man, that sucks. Okay, so so you want to compete you're super heavy, um, and yep. you want to you want to be more explosive, yes. so that you have a, a better chance of. Okay, so how 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 many days a week do you do jujitsu? Uh, four. Okay, for a total of probably eight or nine hours. Oh yeah. So, okay. So one, one day a week I would do, um, traditional strength training and you can include a little bit of plyometrics in that. But in my experience, the lifts that really had the biggest carryover for that, for jujitsu, um, and are you doing no gi? Are you going to do gi competition by the way? Uh, it's, this one's gi. Okay. So no gi is, you I'm sure you know this. No gi is way more explosive. Just people are slippery, Absolutely. they're faster, whatever. With the gi, things tend to slow down. When you hit the ground, a lot of the explosive aspects of jujitsu are with the gi or stand when you're standing. That's when you see a lot of the like how you know if you move quickly or whatever. Um, deadlifts were amazing for that. Deadlifts were really really good. Zercher squats were really really good for that. Um, of course, traditional barbell squats, barbell rows. But you can include a little bit of plyometrics. I just wouldn't overdo it because you're already doing four days a week of jujitsu. More than one day a week of lifting is probably going to be too much. Now, if you back off on the jiu-jitsu, you can lift more, but I would caution you to trade technique for you know strength and power because as you already know, you've already been doing jiu-jitsu for two years. Technique is far more valuable than you know strength and power. So where where's the super heavyweight uh, category start? What weight? Uh, Two twenty one. So you and so, then it's unlimited from there. Okay, so uh, and it says here you're two forty five, right? Yeah, there are boats. Okay, so two forty two as of this morning. Yeah, okay. So two forties, eighteen percent body fat. One of the things I think that would help would be just leaning out too. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you have you you you've got twenty pounds and you'd still stay in the super heavyweight category. Um, I think tightening up your diet would serve you well too. Because you're just lighter. I, yeah. I like, am doing that okay, as so, well. Yeah, to me, I mean, because here and we get questions like this a lot, like with with sports. We just had a sport one before. I mean, nothing is gonna get you better at jujitsu than doing more jujitsu. Mm-hmm. Um, will a uh, one week of strength training complement it? Yeah, it'll complement it, but so also would another day of jujitsu make you great at it. I think the as far as the making you more explosive and your agility and stuff like that with jujitsu, leaning down a little bit more is going to help since and since you're already in the super heavyweight class and you're carrying 20 pounds you could drop down that would be my suggestion would be tighten the diet up yeah one thing i'd add besides like you mentioned a little bit of plyometrics but one thing in terms of lowering your risk versus reward kind of ratio in terms of explosive training you could do some kettlebell swings some heavy kettlebell swings get that nice explosive power out of your hips which is really where you know you're going to generate the most force in, in in any of these moves so um that that is something to incorporate within your weight training. Yeah. Now, now you're not doing, I'm glad you said that, Justin, but don't do them to fatigue, Rob. You're not doing kettlebell swings until you're super tired. You're doing them explosively. And then when you're no longer explosive, you stop higher intentional, okay. less condition. Does that make sense, Rob? Yeah. What, yeah, what, yeah what, absolutely. What would you guys say? Cause obviously what you're doing there is he, they're trying to emulate you thrusting your hips and throwing somebody off of you. Right. So, well, you're, you're I, just, I, I would imagine you're not going to swing more than five times, right? You're no, like, you're doing like five, five, six, seven reps with a heavy kettlebell, um, explosive, put it down, rest for three minutes. Do it again. Treat it like an explosive. Even movement. throwing it, if you have a field you have access to, that's my favorite. Because oh yeah, it's all just concentric. Yes, yes. The other thing too, Rob, is uh, do you have any judo experience? No, I don't. Okay, so this is this is now just because I, I practiced uh, jujitsu and judo. You're doing four days a week of jujitsu. If you you could every other week or maybe even every week, I would do this after this tournament. Okay, add in a day of jujitsu of judo your game will go through the roof. I mean, judo complements jujitsu so much, especially for big guys, because big guys don't like to jump on their back so quickly. So you'll have a lot of guys trying to stand with you. And if you have mm-hmm. some judo, um, I mean, you'll, you'll, you'll take the fight where you want it. And uh, these big guys will go down like, like big trees. So I would do a little, and judo is very explosive. I mean, judo is primarily explosive uh, with, with the way they set their throws up. Awesome. That's all great advice. All right, man. Good luck with your tournament, huh? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rob. Yeah. Another athletic question. You know, it's, um, what the big mistake that I made with jujitsu was trying to improve all my physical attributes in the gym and not just do more jujitsu and more grappling. Those same movements with weight. Yeah. It's like you're, you're better off doing more of that stuff. And I used to, I mean, one of the best things, especially when you're in season is cross train with other grappling sports like Greco, judo, 
you know, then practice no gi. No gi is super fast and explosive because you don't have the gi to slow you down when you're on the ground. Mm -hmm. And that's, then you'll see, and then what you said, Adam, was I didn't even think of that. Yeah, like, I you mean, get a so, little lighter. Right. Sometimes the simple answer is all you really, I mean, he's, what he say, four times a week he's doing jujitsu, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, do jujitsu one or two more days a week in addition to that and lean out a little bit and watch how badass yeah. you get at jujitsu. I mean, if he, if he lost like 10, just 10 pounds of body fat. Yeah, yeah, right. 10 pounds of body fat and then using that additional day to do even more jujitsu or do things specifically yeah, that are going to come. it's such a high technical sport. Totally. So you, the more proficient you are, obviously the better you're going right, to Right, right. So I know uh, we, we sometimes, I think we overcomplicate uh, some of these things and it's like, dude, the fact that he has room to drop 20 pounds yeah. I mean, I, you know how much faster you get totally. when you when you shed 10, 15 yeah. pounds. And four days a week of jiu-jitsu is a lot. At my peak, I was doing four days a week, and then I was lifting one day a week. Five days a week of jiu-jitsu is intense, and it's hard to add. Well, you, you would you would do mobility. Like, well, yeah, or you would do like light rolling, right? Isn't that what they do? Like, like so if I were so if I was like a hardcore jiu-jitsu guy. Yeah, it would be like technique day. Yeah, you would do a day where you guys are like r working at 50%, yeah. right? Yeah. Isn't that what you would do? You so, would. It's just, it's still, it's still, it's exhausting, and it can be pretty brutal on the body. So my point is, if you're doing five days a week of jujitsu, you're probably you're not lifting. You're you're doing mobility. Well, yeah. One day a week. Well, and uh, so my point was that if if the desired outcome is I want to be badass at jujitsu, and he's doing that four days a week, and he's carrying he's eighteen percent body fat and carrying. Now you're you're on point. Uh, to me, it's like practice more jujitsu at a lower intensity if I need to, and cut your weight. Weight, weight. That is the single best thing for you yeah. getting better at jujitsu. Now, are there exercises we can do in the weight room to complement throwing your hips or throwing explosively? Yes, there is, like Justin recommended, but just simply getting better at jujitsu, leaning out and doing jujitsu more, in my That's opinion. Your, is, yeah, you're, yeah, right, you're, you're right. That's a, That'll be the biggest bang for his buck. Look, uh, if you like our information, you, you'll love mindpumpfree.com. We have a ton of guides there that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at MindPumpJustin. Adam is on Instagram at MindPumpAdam. And you can find me on Twitter at MindPumpSal.